Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. So today we have a sponsored video from LabelFlow, which is known as the open platform for image labeling. So image labeling is great for any computer vision application. We need this stuff because in companies, or maybe your own project, you are trying to maybe uh, find all the cats that are in an image, or maybe a self-driving car is trying to find, oh, that's a, that's a red light, that's a green light, that's a stop sign, that's a person, this is where they're going. And so this is very, very important to have labeled all of this data because uh, most of these applications work through supervised learning. It's the same thing like regression, where you know we um, we're trying to predict the the y, the continuous value y. Well, this is that's the same thing here, except maybe we're trying to find okay, uh, this is a person here. These are the x y. Uh, coordinates of where they are. It's really the same type of thing, just more complicated. And so we need people to have labeled this data. And we need uh, some platform for doing that. And this is one great option. And there's many reasons why this is a, uh, a great option. And one of them, the biggest one probably, is because if we go over to pricing, community is $0 forever. So that's great. You can use this right now if you want to. And there's other reasons why you may want to pay as well. And we'll talk about that. So Let's get started because I have not paid anything and yet I'm able to go ahead and do this right now. I opened up an incognito tab, so I'm not signed into anything. Uh, I went to labelflow.ai. I just typed that in. Uh, we don't, if, it, if we type just this in, it's going to redirect us to this thing. Same thing. And we're going to just click try it now. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's skip the tutorial. I would probably recommend still watching the tutorial if you plan on doing this. Um, but yeah, so here's the tutorial data set. I'll just walk through that quickly. So tutorial data set, draw a box. So I can, right now I'm zooming in with uh, with the mouse wheel like this. That's how I got in there. And okay, draw a box around the drone. Select the bo bounding box tool or press B. Okay, well, I, I'd probably rather press B. I pressed B that created this grid thing. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept this, this is fine. And then, um, okay, so probably something like that. It doesn't need to be super precise. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Basically it's drawing this white line across that or white box around that. And so, yeah, now we have a box around that drone. All right, click and release to create the first box corner, click and release to complete the box. I did that job done, yes. Create the drone class, right click on the box that is created. Okay, um, I think that's, yeah, that should be it. And this is gonna be a horse. No, it's not a horse. Let's make it a drone. Okay, there we go. So clearly it's a, it knows what I uh, assigned it there because we have yellow is drone up here and this drew this in yellow. Uh, right drone, yep, done that, press enter, job done. Okay, tutorial for the first one is it, that, that was it. Um, of course, this is just one image and this is a tutorial, but moving on to the second one is, okay, draw a polygon around the main pyramid, C click to create a point, double click to create the last point, job done, okay. Um, all right, or press P. So we can press P, sure, um, here. So now I have this other tool. There's no grid here. That's because we're not doing just boxes. And pyramid, okay, I think they mean like this maybe? So like that? There we go. Yeah, that looks quite nice. Okay, and we could have it however many we wanted. But I'm just gonna click back on that vertice that I started with to finish that off. It, has, it also said double click to create the last point. That I probably could have done that too. And yeah, so now this isn't drawing just a box around it. This is actually uh, going to help the computer do something called segmentation, really, where it can say, oh, no, this, I think this piece is uh, this triangular piece or however kind of shape we wanted here, that um, that's what this is. And if we did this many, many times in many different images of different sizes and different uh, kind of orientations of this, then computers would be able to figure it out if we did a classic training algorithm. Next one. Uh, sorry, actually, I didn't skip something there. Right click on the polygon, right pyramid. Yes, okay, pyramid. And there we go. Next one, tutorial, edit labels and exports. Okay, um, correct the wrong labels below. Move inside or press V, okay. Um, okay, V, and now I'll click on, that one looks, Actually, I can't even see that image quite yet. I see there's a horse's butt there. <laughs> um, these look fine. This one I will fix like that. There we go. So if you ever put it wrong in the first place, you can see where they all are and correct everything. Here, the polygons, they don't seem quite right. So let's do something more like, more like that. More like that. Okay, that looks better. And that one looks fine. These boxes, I don't really know what those boxes are. 
Um, what are those for? I'm just going to delete those. Select a label and press the delete key. Yeah, I'm going to delete those. Those don't seem right. Okay, and then we have horses. So we should here, uh, here is horse. That's good. Um, gray is none. Well, that's not right. So I'm going to select horse for that one. This also, this also seems to be tied to number one. So if I click just uh, one on that, one, 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 there you go. Okay, so we corrected all of those, all those wrong labels. And that's great. So this, this feeds so much data into the system when we have this picture. Uh, generally, you feed it these uh, relatively high dimensional pictures because you get so much, so much information out of it. And then, yeah, we just draw labels around everything and that'd be great. Um, tutorial data sets, last one here. Click on label flow in the top left. Okay, click on create new data set. Um, I kind of missed that, but okay, we're gonna be doing this. So I think this is about making our data set. So we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to make one. I'm actually not sure what it is so, yet. So we'll do Greg's data set. Start labeling. And OK, zero images so far. Well, that's not good. Add images. This is going to be uh, import from a list of URLs. OK, so that'd be great for just getting it from the internet. But we are going to instead uh, browse my files. I really just selected a bunch from my computer. And there they all are magically here. Um, Okay, so I could make a, whatever system I wanted to here, whatever kind of data set. I'm going to do one that locates uh, Greg's head, and it was a one class for Greg's head, and also a class for um, like my, my hand or so. Okay, so I will do this. Um, I forget the, there, but okay, there, there, the shortcuts are right there. Classification, I'm not going to do that today. Um, bounding box, okay, so here. If I was to do one around my head, there we go. We will right click that and say, uh, this will just be Greg, Greg's face really. And this will be, this will be hand. And, and that's not the right class. So that's gonna be hand, right class hand. There we go, okay, that's it. And then we do it for another one. I would say, I would select, I'd select Greg and get him there. I would choose, no, that's not right, hand. I have two hands here, and we're fine with this overlapping, as you can see. There's a hand, and there's a hand, and I could do the polygon tool if I wanted to as well. Uh, bounding boxes is often easier for computers to understand, though. So hand, and hand, and yeah, those are all right. Okay, so then I could complete that for the entire data set, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Here, I'm kind of there we go. Where is it? Um, select, select tool V, delete. Yeah, don't want that. Okay, so I would do that for my entire data set. And this is how if you're making your own project, uh, or you're working in a company, someone would be making this type of data. Now we have to export this into a format. Obviously, they kind of hid the the under Neath from us because we want this high level interface where we're just kind of dragging stuff around um, different different objects. Um, but we're going to have to export this into a nice data set. So here we go. You can either do Coco, uh, PyTorch Detectron, or YOLO with the YOLO frameworks. Uh, we'll just do one with Coco. Uh, we can choose to zip the images together, um, take longer, so I'm not going to do that. But that's great. Avoid image names collision. A unique identifier will be added. That sounds like a good idea. Um, it'll export that. And there you go. It's just a JSON file. And it looks like this. A JSON is just like a, a Python dictionary, if you don't know. Uh, it looks like exactly the same. And here, here's all the data about it and what the format or what the file actually is underneath. And here, here's all of the yeah, segmentation uh, with all the, the, the vertices, basically. All right. Okay. And I just forgot to show the class taxonomy here. So in Greg's data set, I went over to the classes tab and we can see here, I just have the two classes. Uh, there's also ways to do more uh, complicated class hierarchies with um, kind of subclasses in a way with the slash, uh, if you put slash things, I'm not going to show that that is in the documentation. If you want to take a look at that and it's very cool. So one thing I really enjoyed about that experience is it was so easy and fast for me to use. Just started uploading images after I went to labelflow.ai and I, it was intuitive like I just started doing stuff and it wasn't difficult at all like if I was ever confused about something they showed very clearly on the screen like press this button or click this thing I thought it all made perfect sense it was very fast also label flow does not try to own your data or algorithms or anything like that they just kind of let you start working with it and you own everything and they don't try to figure out everything about your data set like some companies do they just want you to start getting work done 
Finally, I completely agree with the makers of Label Flow when they say that there's been a shift recently in the machine learning community, qualifying data and pipelines to improve it has become much more central than the machine learning algorithms themselves. We have found this problem at work very often, and we just talked about this recently, and I completely agree. Label Flow is excellent for this. All right, a couple last things before I go. I really have to say that the documentation is fantastic. Like there's a quick start, they show you everything, how there is to get going. There's videos for everything, uh, very small, just short videos that tell you exactly what this is. Like this is only 23 seconds long and polygons, edit labels, data sets. They show you how to do everything and tell you either in written format or in video, very simply. Now, finally, I will end it with saying the pricing for other options, zero community forever. Obviously, if you don't have to pay for anything, that is the most ideal. But that's not always the case. If you're working for a company or if you are really, really into this kind of stuff, then you may want to go for the starter or the pro, 20 a month or 200 a month. This probably you wouldn't do that unless you're a company, but you know, company, this is aimed at companies as well. Uh, starter could be used for these small group projects where, you know, collaboration that's for hosted images, unlimited data sets, and smart labeling as well. So I hope that helped answer some interesting questions about label flow, hopefully taught you a new type of idea if you haven't been exposed to this before about labeling boxes and how object detection works a little bit. And this is a great tool to do that, whether it's for free or to pay for it if you think that's a good option for you and your company or your team. So yeah, I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed that.